Right, guys, welcome back. Let's continue because we still have to do the chemical properties of organic compounds. We looked at the physical properties. Now, what is it about chemical properties? Organic substances with the same homologous series have the same chemical properties. There are just so many chemical reactions that these organic substances can undergo, and we'll talk about them right away. Now, we've got examples here. The first one is about addition reactions. And when will we get that? They occur in unsaturated organic compounds like alkenes, cycloalkenes, alkynes, cycloalkynes, if they are there. Right, and another one, which is still a type of addition reaction, is called hydrohalogenation. Hydro, because there is hydrogen there, and from there, X, remember, that is for a halogen. So that's why this is called hydrohalogenation. You are adding that hydrohalogen that we have there. Right, and then we've got here another example whereby you are having, you know, an alkene and you are adding a hydrohalogen and you form an alkane or which is a haloalkane to be more specific here. And what happened is that at other times you need to follow this Makonikov rule. And this applies to, you know, the ones with more than one, obviously. Let's look at this one here. What is it that Makonikov uh, rule is uh, taking, t telling us here? We've got a double bond, and the minute we've got a reaction with HCl, this bond is going to break. And when it breaks, then you are going to have an H coming there, and then we have a bond, and then the Cl will come on the other side. But now, what is it that is being said? You don't just put the H where you like or the Cl where you like. You follow the rule by saying, okay, let's have a look at the diagram or the, the structure there. We are looking at where the double bond is, and you are having two of the hydrogen atoms there, but you've got one hydrogen atom. And when you are having HCl, the hydrogen there has to go there. It must not be there. It goes to the atom of carbon that has got more hydrogen atoms. Very important. That is Marconi cough. Right, and then another type of addition reaction is halogenation. Can you see you are putting shin, shin. So here you are putting a halogen, you are adding a halogen, so we call that halogenation. And this is addition of a halogen, and in most cases it is in the form of a diatomic molecule. Right, and example, we've got there an alkene again reacting with chlorine, and then you find that the double bond is broken, and now one is going to bond with Cl, another one bonds with that. You see, that is why we are no more having something that was unsaturated, but it is now saturated. And then we've got hydration, and hydration, you are now putting in what? Water, yes. So there are the conditions. You've got to have strong acid and an example here, we are having phosphoric acid, even sulfuric acid can also be used. We've got that, we add water, and this is one way of forming an alcohol. Okay. Right, and then you've got another example, guys, called combustion. Very important as well. This is happening every day, wherever we are. We've got fossil fuels, and when they react with oxygen, the products there will be carbon dioxide and water at all times. And there is a lot of you know, energy that is being given off. So we are seeing they are highly exothermic. And an example that is given there is methane, not methane, but butane, sorry, butane. Remember, we've got four carbon atoms. So that's butane plus oxygen, and then you form carbon dioxide and water, irrespective of the alkane that you use. Any alkane plus oxygen will result in carbon dioxide and water, and we call that reaction combustion. 
And then you've got another example of a reaction, a chemical reaction, and this one is elimination. It occurs in saturated organic compounds such as alkanes, haloalkanes, alcohols. And uh, what do we have again? We have dehydrohalogenation. You know, in the case of elimination, it is actually, you know, something like the opposite of addition. When you say D, it means you are removing what was added. So remember, in case of addition, we talked about halogenation. But the minute you remove that halogen, we are saying it is dehalogenation. If you had hydrohalogenation, then you remove that hydrohalogen. We call that a, an elimination reaction, and that is a dehydrohalogenation halogenation. So it is very important. Elimination, you take out. But addition, you put in to the organic substance that you have. And there are sometimes really important conditions for the reaction to take place in order that you have the results. Right, you've got an example here where we've got dehydration of alcohols, whereby what is it that is eliminated? you eliminate water from alcohol. So in this case, we've got an alcohol, and through this con uh, concentrated sulfuric acid or concentrated phosphoric acid, you find that because of, especially this um, acid here, because of this sulfuric acid, we've got it as a dehydrating you know, uh, factor and it is going to remove water from whatever substance it comes across. So that is why one of the products there will be water. It is easy when you work with sulfuric acid. So an alcohol, when it is having some of the concentrated sulfuric acid, will definitely uh, be in such a way that water is eliminated, it is taken out, we have dehydration, and therefore, you've got an alkene now that has been formed. And then you've got another example whereby you pass over a heated A2O3 powder. And in this case, what is it that you had? You had an alcohol. And this alcohol now forms an alkene and water. Can you see? Almost similar, but now with something different now. And even the conditions are different. So the most important thing that you just have to note here is what you are doing. Are you taking out or are you putting in? When you take out, it's elimination. When you're putting in, that's addition. And then you've got cracking. Crack, as the, you know, the word says or the name says. Breaking up large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller and more useful bits. We've got example of cracking as thermal cracking. And then another example is, okay, we'll look at that one. But this one, we need the condition there of high temperature and pressure for it to take place. And mind what is happening. You had a very long chain there, and it broke down into this small piece here, which is an alkene, and the other longer part of the substance, another compound which has been formed. So what happened, you broke this down, so that's why we call it cracking. And it happened through a very high condition of heat, and that's why we talk about high temperature and high pressure there. And then you've got another type of cracking, which is catalytic cracking. So this one really, we know, you know, in terms of a catalyst that it plays a very important role in reducing the energy that is needed. So therefore, you don't need high temperature or even high pressure in this case. A catalyst will do the job. And in this case, we have the, the same scenario. You are still going to have a smaller bit with another one which is still long. And this is taking place at low temperatures and pressure. But you definitely need a catalyst. And then you've got another type of reaction, which is called substitution. So substitute is put this instead of that. I'll take this out of a, a compound here, but when I take that out, something must you know, substitute this. You know, it's like in, in soccer, 
at least, you know, substitution is taking place there. But addition is not taking place in soccer, isn't it? So then let's have a look at what we have as examples. Let's look at this one that we have. We've got an alcohol. It is reacting with HBr, hydrogen bromide. And what happens is that the H is going there. And then what is happening is that the one of them, the OH actually, is being taken out. Can you see that? And when you do that, you bring something, and you only bring the Br to the compound. And when you do that, you are going to form water as part of the product that is going to be formed, okay? And this is what happened. OH was removed, and that was substituted by a Br. So nothing was lost that much. Actually, it was just a matter of substitution. Right, and then we've got here the other compound, which is just, you know, put in the form of a molecular formula in this fashion. Or we can say this is still a condensed structural formula that is still fine. And we have now a base. And this is one of the strongest bases you can get. And when you have that, we find that we are able to form an alcohol and then you form potassium bromide or a salt, all right? And the other one is whereby you can have an alkane with a halogen, and then you form that haloalkane, and you form an acid. But you definitely need an energy coming from the sun. Guys, this is very important. There are just so many, I know, but this is basically what we have as a summary of the reactions, where we talk about substitution, or we talk about elimination, or we talk about addition. So if you look at this type of um, a table or a flow chart, then definitely you will be able to tell when to talk about addition, when to talk about you know, elimination, or when to talk about substitution. But as you know, the words or the names are saying it, it is what is taking place. Check what happens to your organic substance, whether something is removed or something is um, added or something is removed, but something at the same time is taking that place. Right, so for us to check if you do understand, let's have a look at the activity. We've got here, a flow diagram below showing two organic reactions. The letter X represents an organic compound. And there is what we have from the flow diagram. And here is a question. What type of reaction is reaction one? What are the conditions needed to form an alcohol from an alkene? Just have a look at that. and. I will t just give you two minutes, and your two minutes start right away, guys.
Okay, guys, welcome back. Let's have a look at the answer. And let's have a look at what the question was saying to us. What type of a reaction is reaction one? Let's have a look at that. Alkin, the minute you see that, yes, definitely, that's addition. And what is it that was added? That was water. That's why we have alcohol, isn't it? And that is hydration. And the second question, what are the conditions needed to form an alcohol from an alkene? And we have there, you add water in the presence of a strong acid, such as phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid. And from there, if you wanted to you know, give the name of what we have there as the you know, substance X, that was going to be butanoic acid. Remember, we did that in our you know, long episode that we had regarding esterification. So we've got an alcohol and an acid to form an ester. Okay, so guys, uh, that is your answer, and let's just have a short break.